right, section 2.2 is going to begin our discussion of describing sets, discussion of sets. So to start with, what is a set? A set is simply any collection of objects. You can talk about uh, your friends. Okay, so they don't actually have to be physical objects. They could be people. Uh, you can talk about a set of movies in your cabinet or uh, songs on your iPhone. Okay, so it's a collection of something. Elements are the individual objects in that descriptive set that you just created. So if it's friends, maybe it includes Amy or maybe it includes Jessica. If it's movies, maybe it includes Field of Dreams. Um, or if it's uh, songs in your iPhone, maybe it includes Overcomer. Okay? Whatever it is, it's the individual items that are in that collection. There are two basic ways to describe sets. One is the listing or the roster method. And that's simply where we list out the individual objects. So if we were talking about, for example, the numbers that are bigger than seven, whole numbers, um, this would actually look like seven, eight, nine, and if it continued on sort of indefinitely, we can do the three dots at the end. Set builder notation works a little bit better because it doesn't include this dot, dot, dot sort of you know, continuation notation. So if you were looking again at this exact same one in terms of mathematics, here's what it looks like. So I'm going to write it down and then we'll talk through what it's actually saying. There are a lot of symbols here and I'm actually going to talk about um, part of this on the next slide. Um, but the reason or the way I, I should say that this is red is this is red, all x, this line is vertical and is red such that x is greater than or equal to 7. You know that part. And this says x, this is this like curvy e, it doesn't look very good, but it looks supposed to look like that. Okay? This is as an element of, and this n means natural numbers. So I'm going to talk about the natural numbers here in a minute, what that means. But this means is an element of, it just means it's actually in that set. Okay, so if Amy's one of your friends and you wrote Amy is an element of Hannah's friends, that's what, that would be that description. The E is, is an element of. It's included among the next things. So let's talk about the number system and the symbols that are used. So the first one that I just mentioned is this one. It means is an element of. You want to write kind of small in this section because I have several things we're going to define. Um, the next thing, oh, also, if you put a slash through it, what do you think that's going to mean? Yeah, it's not an element of. So, so you'll see that used sometimes too, and we'll come across that later. All right, so this was the first one that I used, this N with this double line on the left. These are the natural numbers, and the natural numbers are the numbers that you first learn to count with when you first start learning to count. You start with the number 1. So this is 1, 2, 3, and on and on indefinitely, forever, okay? The next thing that you do when you're first when you're learning numbers is you start to include the number zero. Okay? So you still have all the numbers you had before, but you get this one additional number, and when you do, we call this the whole numbers. So natural numbers, whole numbers. And whole numbers include all the ones we had before, but they also include zero. Right? And then if you expand your definition of numbers a little bit more, you might include negatives. Okay, so that's a Z with a double line in the middle. When we include the negatives, we get the numbers that are the integers. So these are positive and negative whole numbers. If we list them in roster method, we have to put the dot, dot, dot at the beginning. I'll do negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 and the dot, dot, dot at the end. So we get all the same numbers we had before, plus we also get to include their negatives. The next set of numbers that we include start to talk about fractions 
Uh, the reason we use z for integers, by the way, instead of say i, is because i is usually used for irrational. It's used for something else. Um, the z comes from the Latin word for integers, so that's where it's coming from. Q is for rational numbers, and rational numbers are the numbers that are our fractions, our decimals that have, a re have either a repeating version to them or our decimals that stop, okay? Um, and so these are rational numbers. Typically speaking, we think of them as being able to be written as fractions. So this is anything that can be written as a fraction. So this actually includes, again, everything above. How would I write 2 as a fraction? 2 over 1, or you could get super fancy and write like 6 over 3, right? I mean, you, there's lots of ways that we could write these numbers as fractions. So it includes all of these things, plus it also includes other things like 1 over 2, all right? So it can be written as a fraction um, of integers. Let me say that. We don't get everything that's fractional. We just get fractions of integers. All right, and the last one that we're going to mention on this slide before we stop is an R with a double line on the left. Um, these are the real numbers, and these are all rational and irrational. Um, so let me make one comment before I talk about the real numbers. The fact that we're using the R for real numbers is the reason we don't use it for rational. The reason we use the Q for rational is because another word that you use for dividing is the word quotient. So that's where the Q is coming from, Q for quotient, for division. R is for real numbers, so it includes all these fractional things, but it also includes numbers that are irrational like pi and E. Sometimes I'll have somebody ask me, but isn't that all the numbers there are? And the answer is no. Uh, it also would include things like square roots and cube roots and things like that. Um, it's not all the numbers there are, but it is also numbers that you would deal with until you got into probably an Algebra 2, maybe an Algebra 3 kind of course, where you encounter the complex number system and you encounter the square root of negative 1, which is the letter I. It's the number I, but it looks like a letter. So that's not a rational or an irrational number. There are other things, okay? Um, but these are all the numbers that we're going to deal with in um, any of the elementary math sequence courses. And we'll stop here for today.